right now. Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Good evening, everyone. This is Bob Pompiani. We are live tonight in the Fan Cave, where you know the number. It's 412-575-2600 on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Yes, we are. We're also live at 93.7 The Fan. That's where Andrew Filipponi is right now. And you can hit us up on Twitter, at KD Pomp, at The Pony Express, or call, as I said, that number, 412-575-2600 on a night where the Penguins, for the second game in a row for them, got no help. Andrew, they needed major help. They put themselves in this position by losing to Boston. Tonight, Boston went to Washington, and Washington clamped down on them, got a big win, and then Detroit, of all things, down two, came back and won. This is the problem when you fall behind and you let points slip away, and now they could be eliminated tomorrow night. They don't play. Both Washington and Detroit do, and they're going to need to lose. Your thoughts about what happened? Yeah, Bob, uh, I can't see you. I can only hear you. So bear with me on my end tonight from those technical difficulties. So when you go to highlights, I'm going to be completely <laughs> blind. Okay. <laughs> which the refs were when it came to those goalie interference calls tonight because both of those goals should have counted. My goodness. I've seen Patrick Horn Hornquist score about 100 goals that way in his NHL career. And for them to disallow those goals was a complete outrage. But I digress. Uh, Bob, what happened in Detroit and uh, Washington – really took a lot of the air out of the balloon for me. Uh, I, I was watching the Penguins, for the most part, play a very good game. They dominated the first period, and then I thought they picked it back up in the third. And Eric Carlson might have played his best game in a Penguins uniform tonight, but watching Montreal self-implode, and thank you, Bruins, for showing up tonight. Way to go, guys. 15 shots? Are you kidding me, Bob? They're still trying to get the number one seed in the Atlantic Division. And Washington held them to 15 shots for 59 minutes of that game. I don't get it. It's almost like they tried to lose the game there on purpose tonight. Uh, I, you Sorry, know I'm emotional about this. I know, but I also think Washington played a really smart game, knowing that Boston is one of those teams that can score a lot of goals, as the Penguins found out. They gave them no opportunities. None. They shut them down. They played almost a trap type of game. Uh, and uh, you can say what you want. They did what they had to do, and they're getting good goaltending uh, as well. So bottom line is they did what they had to do. And you, if you're, if you're going to blame the Penguins, blame them on losing. Blame them on giving another point to Detroit the other day when they could have had a 5-3 win. True. Instead, they have to go into an overtime situation. They get so sloppy at critical times, they have no one but themselves to blame. Well, they didn't do that tonight, though, to their credit. I thought in the third period they played a pretty button-down game. Uh, they did not really allow Nashville to get back into the game. The Carlson pass to Bemstrom was one of the best plays I've seen him make in a Penguins uniform. Yes. Arguably one of the best passes I've ever seen him make, period, in his NHL career. But, yeah, you're right, Bob. I mean, this whole thing from the very beginning, when you are, I think it was nine points out with 11 games to go, you really should not even have a shot to be in this position where you could technically go into game 182 with a chance. But I just got my hopes up. I thought when I saw the scores around 9 o'clock tonight that things were going to break the Penguins' way, that Boston would battle back, and that Montreal would hold on, and neither one of those two things happened. No, and Montreal got real sloppy. I'll tell you what, Lucas Raymond is a stud for Detroit. He scored the He's one to tie it, and then he scored the one to win it. Uh, and they got some snipers on that team. So tomorrow night, yeah, if you're a Penguins fan, you got to hope something happens there. Now the Flyers will be playing at home against the Caps, so maybe something can there. That's always a big rivalry game. But the way that Washington, I'm telling you, um, Charlie Lindgren in goal has been terrific, and, and they're making life easier on him, to your point. Boston got hardly Bob, any opportunities in that game. You made it. Uh, when the Penguins went there and beat Washington and scored at will on Lindgren, I thought Washington was ready to nosedive. They then went out and they beat Tampa Bay and Boston in back-to-back -back games. I am frankly stunned by that, that they've been able to find more scoring. They've been one of the worst goal-scoring teams in the NHL this year. It's really all come from Ovechkin, who got to 30 again. John Carlson has scored some monster goals for them down the stretch. The defenseman who's been there since uh, the Penguins and Capitals tussles in the playoffs a few years ago. And... Their coach, if they make the playoffs, Bob, give him at least a vote for the Jack Adams because they have no business being a playoff team 
with the type of players they have. So many injuries there this year. Ovechkin being what he is, goaltending changes. Uh, very surprised that Washington is in the driver's seat right now to make the playoffs. But that can all change tomorrow. It would be interesting because the Islanders also clinched tonight, so they wouldn't have anything to play for on Wednesday except they would probably love to deny the Penguins if that game became meaningful for the Penguins. We'll talk more about it coming up. 412-575-2600. The Pirates also played in New York. The Mets came back from a 3-0 deficit to beat them. We want your calls. Call us right here on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Our GMC Sierra tweet of the night comes from Spot Track, who says Caitlin Clark, who was the number one pick to no one's surprise tonight, by Indiana, she's going to get a four-year deal total package, three hundred thirty-eight thousand, less than a hundred thousand per year. She made four point one million in NIL money this past season at Iowa. Of course, she's going to make a ton of endorsement money, so that doesn't really matter. But it's very interesting to see <laughs> what the salary is compared to the endorsement potential for Caitlin Clark. I got a, a couple of tweets here, interesting, Andrew. This one, uh, and, and I'd like to get your take before we go to the lines. Uh, Zach Williams, or I'm sorry, it's Kim D, who says, Bob, which game? Are you going to remember most if the Penguins don't make the playoffs? So I could I could think about six of them. Uh, I go out west. I could think of the Calgary game. I think of the Colorado game. I think of this one in Detroit yep. this past week. They lost to Arizona early in the season where they didn't show up. There are a lot of examples, and you knew it was going to be tight. So pick pick any one of those. Do you have another? Uh, the Colorado game, when you're up 4 nothing, it's against a great team. But to not win that game was just and you know, I know they got a point, but it was just embarrassing. A Calgary game, similar situation. You lose that game Saturday, then you go to Edmonton the next day, and it looks like it's men versus boys. You're not even in the same uh, professional hockey league with them. They had a game against Anaheim where they had a five-on-three at the end of the game. They didn't cash in. Mm -hmm. They lose to the Ducks, a pitiful team. So uh, they lost to Ottawa twice in overtime this year, Bob. They've left a lot of points on the table. And no question they did that for sure. We also have this from Zach Williams. A Roldis Chapman needs to learn how to throw strikes or be DFA'd. That's pretty, uh, pretty harsh considering uh, tonight he got ejected from the game. Uh, Pirates lost to the Mets 6-3. to three. Uh, He thought he had a call third strike on one of them. Didn't. Later got ejected. They end up, you know, doing, uh, giving up three runs in the seventh and eighth, I think, Andrew. So the Pirates end up losing that game after a nice win yesterday. So they're now 11-6. and six. But, you know, the bottom line there is... Uh, they need to get more production out of guys like Henry Davis, Suwinski on a more consistent basis, and people like that. Their offensive production has been okay to start this season. It started better than it is right now, but they need more. Yeah, but Suwinski got off to a weird start because they faced all those left-handed pitchers in the first few games, and he struggles against lefties, so he was in and out of the lineup. Henry Davis, you know, all the way down batting ninth for the most part. Number one overall pick, given the burden of handling a pitching staff, but that doesn't excuse hitting under 200 for as many games as he has. You know, he's come through with some RBIs, but that's really it. And Joey Bart, I mean, Joey Bart knocking on the door here. Every time he's in the lineup, he goes deep. Guy had great potential, was the number two pick in the draft behind Mays, the Tigers pitcher a few years ago, or Mize, excuse me. Um, and he just got run out of San Francisco because they put too much on his plate too early, Bob. So... I wonder there uh, if Davis continues to struggle, if they would give more opportunities to Bart. Yeah, and with Yasmani and Grandel coming back, you could see him go to the minors if things don't start changing. Yep. So the fact that he batted ninth tonight was uh, a little surprise for me. All right, let's go to the lines, Andrew. We begin with Kirk in Manor. Hey, Kirk, what's going on? Hey, how are you doing, Bob and Andrew? Good. Hey, I'm just calling to ask you guys, it's like the tale of two mics. Do you think he's doing a better job? Mike Sullivan and Mike Tomlin. Hey. I, yeah, pretty much the same. Uh, you know, not having a lot of success getting to the postseason recently and, and getting there and getting eliminated. So I'd say the same at this point. I'd go with Tomlin uh, because Tomlin got his team to the playoffs and it looks like uh, Sullivan and the Penguins are going to miss and fewer teams make the playoffs in the NFL. Uh, so I would say that uh, Sullivan is only w only a couple years ahead of Mike as far as the playoff win drought goes. The Steelers don't have a playoff win since 2016. And the Penguins are 2018. Bob, both of those teams so good for so long, and now they can't win a playoff game or series. It's just crazy. Yeah, it really that is. Both of these teams are mired in the playoff slumps. 
that they're in right now. Yeah, somehow, though, if the Penguins should get in, I, I wonder just what they can do. Um, and if they do get in, uh, they're going to have to take on, is it Boston at this point? Because I know the Rangers no, won the, the Metro. Rangers. The Rangers, the Rangers clinched the President's Trophy okay. tonight. I wasn't sure if that was Ottawa. the case. Since Boston lost, they yep. blew that opportunity. So instead, so did it be the Penguins Rangers. I don't know about you, Andrew, but I can see them winning a series like that. I really can, the way Nadalkovich is playing, and I imagine he'll continue to play. Well, I would think he would, too, after Mike Sullivan went with Nedeljkovic over Jari tonight. I think that his faith in Nedeljkovic was rewarded. I thought he played a good game. I wouldn't say great. I thought it was good, which was all that was needed because you got the four goals. He didn't give up any really bad goals tonight like he did against Boston in the second period on Saturday. Uh, yeah, I mean, he it's going to be a lot of games in a short amount of time for Ned, and we've never seen him do anything like this, Bob. So I thought he was running out of gas against Boston ticked back up tonight uh, that will be a challenge I don't think the Rangers will win the Stanley Cup and we see upsets all the time I'd give them a shot but right now I would pick the Rangers to win that series I like Carolina to emerge as Eastern Conference champions and I say that because I Ooh. like their team before Jake Kent so he's had 24 points in 16 games with them he's given them Ooh. a lot more than I think maybe even they expected so We'll see how that goes. Some great matchups, and I'm excited about the NBA tomorrow night, which we'll talk about, Andrew. Meantime, let's go to Ed in Uniontown. Ed, thank you for joining us here on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Good evening, gentlemen. Hey. I've got a quick comment about Eric Carlson. Um, perhaps the Penguins should consider making him a winger or a swing player like they did with Phil Bork 30 years ago because <laughs> he's talented offensively, but he leaves a lot to be desired on the defensive end. Well, he had a really good game tonight. And, again, we've seen glimpses of really – He's a tremendous player. I don't think there's any doubt. It's just that as a defenseman, you're expected to play pretty good defense. And when you're named Norris Trophy winner, that means you're the best defenseman. Really, what you are as a point producer at the blue line, Andrew, uh, they need more of defensive responsibility from not only him, but Latang and, and others back there. You can't play the way they play, especially with leads. You know, it's okay to try to be, you know, push the metal to the pedal offensively when you're, but if you do it too much, you're going to invite opportunities the other way. Well, plus he's been the quarterback of the power play for almost the entire year. And they were ticking at 40, 14%. It was on track to be the second worst Penguins power play in team history. So he has to take a lot of the culpability for that too. Uh, it's just, to me, mind boggling that with his offensive flair and offensive skill, that he can't help them generate more goals from that position on the power play. If they are a below average power play, they would make the playoffs, Bob. They absolutely stink. I think the refs kept disallowing those goals in this game because they were shocked that pucks were going in the net while the Penguins had an extra man. Yeah, I, you know, getting back to what your original thing with this um... – the two goals that were called off, I can't understand the NHL. I really can't. I, I, I mean, first of all, I was stunned that Nashville challenged the first one. I was even more stunned that they challenged the second one. I didn't understand what they're looking for. And then I don't understand what the league expects. The Penguins have not provided a lot of traffic in front all year. And the minute they do it, it seems like, oh, now it's a problem. You can't get in there. I, I didn't see goaltender interference in any of these two. No. Not even close. I thought they were good screens. Yeah. Bunting has been a really uh, – I, I got to give Kyle Dubas credit. That trade initially I was uh, very disappointed in to give up Gensel. But now you have Bunting who gives a, kind of a different element to that second line where he gets, he gets down low. He gets uh, in the mix. He's physical with people. He's a pest. I really like his game. O'Connor's gone up on the first line with Gensel out. And he looks like he's blossoming, blossoming Bob and coming into his own. So that trade, I never thought I'd say this, but in a way it's been a blessing in disguise for the Penguins because O'Connor has played so well and they added a new type of player in bunting. Yeah, well, I'm glad they finally gave O'Connor a legit opportunity. I think he's, he's been deserving of one before this season and he finally got it. Didn't start that way, but because of the vacancy there and, and the trade, he got it. All right, let's go real quick to uh, Conrad, who's in Cincinnati. Hey, Conrad, what's up? What's up, guys? How you doing tonight? All right, make hey, it quick, please, if you don't mind. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to – what do you think about those uh, Detroit Lions? You think they're going to make any noise next year? Or Detroit Lions out of the blue. <laughs> 
Uh, they're a pretty good team. They had the same amount of wins, I think, as the Detroit Pistons, which tells you everything you need to know about the Pistons, Andrew. I, that is a heck of a stat, Bob. Uh, what do I think of the Detroit Lions? Um, I think they've got as good a shot as anyone because they kept their, co their coaches. The offensive coordinator didn't leave. Uh, they're bringing their entire offense back. And if they can draft the right guys on defense, I like Dan Campbell. they got to overcome that decision-making, Bob, from the NFC Championship game. Yeah. And then they'll have a shot. they got to get over that hangover this one year. Yeah, one other note, Devonta Smith got a $75 million three-year extension from the Eagles today. So the wide receivers keep getting paid. We'll see what it means for a guy like Ayuk down the road. we got to take a break. We'll take it. Uh, Mick, hang on. I'll try to get to you when we come back. You're watching the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call right here on KDKA+. Mick, make it quick if you don't mind. Hey, hey, how you doing, Bob, Tony? Good. How you guys doing? Good. Uh, hey. Just, I know I don't want to reiterate what you talked about before, but my my opinion is, and let me get your your you guys' opinion on this. Henry Davis will probably be at most an average catcher in Major League Baseball. I, I uh, think it's too soon to make that, uh, Mick. Uh, and, and I'm sorry, but we're out of time. I, I think. It's, I'm not willing to say that now. I watched Ke Brian Hayes, like you did, Andrew, struggle for many years to the point where people were talking about, well, wow, this guy's heading toward bust status. And it just, sometimes it takes times with these guys. And, and I'm, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. He was number one overall. Bart, number two overall, and he struggled. Now he's here. We'll see. The Bart move, though, was kind of a take a shot in the dark on a guy and see where it brings you or gets you. And he's played so well offensively that I would want to give that guy more of a chance, Bob, because he's not like Jason DeLay. He doesn't project as a career backup. He was supposed to be Buster Posey's heir apparent. Mm -hmm. uh, so if he hits, I think he should get more of an opportunity. I'm sorry. Even if Henry Davis was the number one pick in the no, draft by this I team. I get it. What I'm saying is he went through that same situation in San Francisco to the point where they traded. Yeah, ex exactly. So it takes time. Yep. That's all. Anyway, Pony, we're out of time. All right, Bob. We'll see you again tomorrow night. Talk some NBA, all right? <laughs> I'm looking forward Sounds to that. Good to me. Yes, sir. That's going to do it. Thanks for joining us tonight. We'll do it again tomorrow night for the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Have a good night.